Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making this really cool crystal landscape. Let's jump into it. If you want to get the full uncut version of this tutorial that shows you how we got to this final image with the camera animation and everything, I go through all of it. Check that out over on the Patreon. If you join at the uh, at any tier, you can get it there. Or on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher. You can get access to all the uncut tutorials. And that's for all my tutorials for all time. They're all uncut and there's lots of extra stuff. So you can also get this project file if you want to use it for something over on Patreon uh, at the second tier and up. So go check that out if you're interested. So we're going to start off and I'm going to hit A to select all and X to delete for tradition. So I'm going to go shift day mesh and we're going to create a cube. And I'm going to go into edit mode on this cube. Uh, for me using tab uh, brings me this pie menu, but you might have um, a different setting. You can change that in your preferences. You can also just use this, just switch. Um, we're going to go to edit mode and I'm going to go to face mode by clicking on the number three on my keypad. And I'm going to G and Z. We're going to go up. And I want to um, sort of like break this down to, into uh, like a, a cross hat top because I want to have this thing have like a pyramid top to it. So to do that, I'm going to use the knife tool. I'm going to hit K and I will click here and then click here and then hit return. I'll hit K again, click here, click there, hit return. There we go. I'm going to go to number one to get my vertex selection mode and grab this one. GZ, bring this up. There we go. Got my basic crystal object. All right. Now with this crystal object, I do want to have some faceted ed edges. It's hard to say. So I'm going to put a bevel on this. I'm going to come over here to the modifiers tab and I'll click add modifier and I'll search for bevel. You can see that creates this nice little bevel for us. And um, what I want to do is decrease the angle. So I get a bevel here as well. And I'm going to take, I'm going to hold down shift and just make this a little bit smaller. And I'll increase the segments up to maybe four. So we get a lot of segments in there. And I'll right click shade smooth. Awesome. Pretty cool looking shape. All right. Now, what we're going to do is create a material for this that's got some really cool features to it and see what we can create here. Um, and uh, first thing we're going to do is we'll switch over to rendered view. And I'm going to click the little drop down next to render and I'll turn off scene world. And I'm going to pull up a scene world here that just give us some basic HDRI lighting, which I'm happy with that. That one will be fine. Let's come down to our materials tab for this object, click new and we'll call this crystal. Now for this crystal shader, I'm going to open my shader editor and I want this to be translucent. So I want to see through it. Um, I want it to have kind of a glowy kind of feel to it, like a magical kind of feel and maybe some sparkles and stuff. So let's see what we can create here with all that. I'm going to come up to my uh, render settings tab. I'm going to work with Eevee um, and I can leave all this stuff the same, but I'm going to turn on ray tracing right here. Um, and I like to turn up my fast GI approximation. I like to turn my rays up to 16 and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll leave all the rest of it as is. Now for this shader, first thing we want to do is let's get this translucency working. So I'm going to go down to the transmission option on the principal BSDF shader. And transmission is the value that controls how much light goes through the object, right? So not subsurface where it penetrates a little bit and scatters, but actually light travels all the way through. Now it might refract, so it might bend the light. Um, but uh, this is how much goes through. So I'm going to turn this up to one. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the options tab for this material. And I want to make sure I've got ray trace transmission turned on, which is right here. Without that, it won't activate. This will allow us to have ray tracing at work with our transmission. Now, we're not going to be able to really see through clearly as long as our roughness is so high. We need to bring our roughness of our surface down so we don't scatter the light. You can see as we get closer to zero, the more not only are we reflecting the environment, but we're also getting refraction inside it. Now it's a little bit hard to see just as is, so I might just go mesh plane and create a plane here that I can scale up. And uh, that way you can see a bit of that refraction at work uh, here, especially. You can see it uh, playing out there. Now we can dial in that roughness however we want. Pretty good. Looks great. Let's see if we create maybe a mesh sphere and put that back here. You can see that we are getting refraction quite nice. Awesome. All right. So that's the basic refraction material. Now let's figure out what else we could do. Let's give it an overall tint. So I'm going to give it like a bluish, bluish color, something like this. 
Um, you can see now it's tinting the whole thing. And we can also change the IOR. This is the index of refraction. So when this is one, it's like perfectly see-through. It doesn't bend the light at all. Light just goes straight through. So you see we lose all the shape of the object. But as I hold down shift and drag this up, I'm going to start getting more and more refraction. So we can kind of determine how pure this object is, you know, on the inside. Now, what we could do is create different levels of refraction based on some kind of other shader. Like we could come over here and grab a uh, Voronoi, for example, and then drag this distance and grab a color ramp and drop it there into the factor and then take the color and drag it into the roughness. And this will actually give us different levels of refraction based on the uh, noise shader, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see, we would want to have an IOR of these all need to go over one. That's the only problem. So this one value should be one, and this one the value should be maybe 1.5. Let's say. Oh, I'm in roughness. That's why it's not working. IOR is what I wanted. There we go. It's kind of cool. I've never tried this before. I just had this idea just now. I was like, what does this do? Kind of cool. Oh, wow, that's neat. Look at that. That's kind of interesting. So cool. We got to keep that. It's not at all what I was intending to do, but I love it. <laughs> what if we could put some like stars inside it? Let's let's try something crazy, okay? I'm going to open up emission, okay? And we're going to pull this emission out and I'm going to grab a color ramp and then, oops, not going to mix, I'm going to color ramp. Color ramp. And then I want to take the factor of that color ramp and we're going to use a noise texture to drive it. And the factor is fine. And I'm going to turn the scale way up to like 600. And I will bring this up. And we're not saying anything yet because our shrink is set to zero. So we set this to one. We're going to start getting that noise. And I kind of want to bring these together. We do that thing we do with like space all the time. We have stars and stuff. So let's take this down maybe 200. Something like that. Might turn the strength up to 10. Uh, I want to see some bloom in, in my viewport. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up my, my compositor. And click Use Nodes. I'm going to come over here to my renders uh, settings. I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to make sure compositor is, dis is enabled always. And over here, we're going to grab a glare node and drop this here. I'm going to change this from streaks to bloom and the threshold. Uh, yeah, one's, one's fine. Now we can play with that. Um, right, so what I'm thinking with this is let's, could we make it feel like we're looking through, like into a galaxy? So let's take the vector and let's go for texture coordinate. And I want to grab, we're going to grab the window texture coordinate. See how that works. This should give us like a pass through effect. Yeah, yeah, so there it is. It looks like it's always in the distance. Well, not in the distance, but like behind it. So it doesn't look very far away. I wonder if we could like change it. Like what happens if we do a vector math, drop this here, and then divide by something? Or by two? That just gets bigger, doesn't it? actually feel like it's further away. Now there's a way to do that. Like you have to multiply something by something. Like you have to grab like the camera and multiply or divide or something. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that divide. That's kind of interesting. What happens if we flip these? Yeah, that feels a bit distant to me. It feels like it's further away. Now, I think maybe we need to create some variation in these shapes. These guys look a little too regular. So I'll keep my bevel, but I will add a subdivision surface. Might turn my bevel amount down. So instead of four segments, let's go down to two. And then let's take our subdivision surface up to two, and then let's add a displacement modifier and click new to create a new texture. Let's go to the texture tab. And let's switch it from image or movie to clouds and play with the size a little bit. Make it really big. Two is good. Let's go up to um, 
Let's see if it's hard. Does that matter? Go back up to the um, actual modifier. And the mid level down, so we don't end up with the weird double up on the point there. And then with the strength, just play with that. And shading flat would be good. It's nice because it just breaks it up a little bit. Now, I want to take the coordinates off of local, and we're going to set these coordinates to global so that as we move, it's going to stop. Now, come by my um, actual tab here with the properties, and I'm going to zero it out. Go. And I do want to bring him up so that the base is on the floor. In fact, I want to go so far as to um, selecting that bottom face there. And shift S cursor to selected, and then take this and go object set origin to 3D cursor. That'll put the origin right down there at the bottom. Then what we can do is uh, let's use this plane, right? I'm going to scale this down a bit, and then I just want it to be a bit bigger than the base of this thing. And then let's take this and let's go F3 apply scale. Okay, so I want the scale to be one one and one. And then we're going to add some geometry nodes to this. So I'm going to add a geometry nodes modifier. We'll click new. We'll call this crystal. And in the geometry nodes editor, what we're going to do is come over here. And I just want to create a little, you know, group of these guys, right? So let's, let's create, um, let's see, uh, points. Um, so distribute points on faces. So I'll drop that there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and let's, we don't want that many points. I'm going to turn my density right down. Like, I don't know, point, point 0.5, let's say. And then I'm going to instance on points. Drop this here. The instance is going to be our crystal object, which is called cube. Um, so I'll call this, let's see, what do I want? I'll just drag it in. So I'll drag the cube drop it in here, grab the geometry, and we're going to plug that into the instance. Next, we want to um, do some uh, random rotation here. So I'm going to come right here and let's think about how we want to rotate this. I'm going to just drag this out. We're going to type in random and we'll go random value and keep it a vector. Um, so let's see. If these are all zero to begin with, the max and the min, then they're going to be all straight up and down. So we just want to begin to introduce uh, some rotation that way and some rotation that way. And don't want them to go too far. Do that. And then a little bit of that. Some good variation. And I'm going to do the same thing for scale. So we're coming here to scale, random, uh, random value. Now we never want to be scaled to zero. We might want them to be as small as 0.1, possibly. We also want it to be uniform, I think. Although this does look kind of cool, not uniform. We will keep it. I'm going to untick my camera to view, and I'm going to pop out. Um, actually, I'll come down here to my camera tab, and I'll go to viewport display, and I'll turn up passport 2 to 1. And then I think I'll make my lens a bit wider, maybe 35. And then I'm going to just expand my view a little bit and get rid of all these widgets and stuff off to this view. And then I'll come over here and I'll make another 3D view so we can build with this and look through with this. So, and I might switch screencast keys to this, this window. There we go. All right. I'm going to lock my camera to view, which you can also do by clicking this icon right there. And let's get a cool angle on this. And I'm also gonna go to my camera and turn on depth of field. And I'm gonna take my f-stop down to like 0.5 maybe. And I'll just focus to right about there, I think. You can visualize that, by the way, if you come over here to limits and turn that on for your camera, it'll show you this right here is actually your focal plane. You can just click and drag that. You don't have to hit G or anything. Um, it's really useful. So, shift D, 
I'll bring this one right up. And what I do is um, just have a bit of fun playing the, like uh, placing this stuff, right? All right, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I learned a lot of cool things about how to make shaders that do neat stuff and use geometry nodes and all the things that we covered. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching all the way to the end as well. Really appreciate it. And thanks to all the supporters on Patreon and everybody on YouTube that supports this channel. I really appreciate all of you so much. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, see ya. Oh, 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 oh.